Hey there, I'm your host Lesoe, and this is part 5 of our equipment system series. In today's video, we'll be creating the wardrobe inventory. And with that said, let's begin. We'll start by going into the content drawer, and in here we want to create a new slot, which will be a part of our wardrobe inventory. So let's go ahead and do that. So create a user widget, and let's name it wb underscore wardrobe slot and let's open it up in here we want to add a size box like so and once again up to you with the width and height override i'll do 60 by 60 and fill screen to desired we then will grab ourselves a button drag it in for the style we'll do zero and zero on pressed padding and for the background color opacity set to zero we then want to name it button underscore wardrobe slot will do. With that, we then want to grab a border, drag it in, fill it out, zero padding. And for the color, we have one saved here. So 5F828 AFF, if you're curious. So that's that. Um, we then want to grab a image. That would be a good idea. Drag it in here, padding set to two. And the image name will do img underscore word rope slot. Okay. So that's that. We then want to head over to our graph. In here, then we're only interested in the event construct. So let's delete the tick and the pre-construct. And we'll create a new variable called item ID. And this will be of type and name. Instance editable and exposed on spawn. Let's then get it and do a get row, get data table row, and we'll select our database and out row will do a break. And we're only interested in the image once again. So in here, we'll grab our image. There we are. And we'll do set brush from texture, like so. Drag it in, row found, goes in here. And I believe that's all we have to do for now. So let's compile and save that. Next, we want to go ahead and create our wardrobe inventory. So let's go to our content drawer, right click, create a new user widget. And we'll call this WB underscore wardrobe inventory. And let's open it up. In here, then we want to add a canvas panel. And the reason I'm adding a canvas panel to this is I want to know the location of the mouse on the screen. So we'll need it to spawn this inventory. And then we'll grab a border, like so. Now for the size, it's up to you. I believe I have it saved as 280 by 140. And now this corresponds to the size of the slots. So keep that in mind. With that then, um, for the color, I have one saved here. So we'll copy that and we'll give this here. If you're interested, that's it right there. And we'll have another border, should probably name these. So border frame, keep everything organized. And border background, like so. Okay, now for the background, I have another one here. So this is for you, sir. There you go. Boom, okay. Now it'll look a lot cooler if we add that gradient to it as well. So gradient, if I learn to spell, gradient, there we are. And it looks better. Now it's darker, so we see the brighter slots on it. It just looks a lot better, in my opinion. But of course, play around with this. Um, with those two borders in there, we then want to add a scroll box. And just in case we run out of space in here, this will allow us to scroll down. And for the padding, we'll do zero. And then in here, of course, we want our wrap box, which will hold all the slots. And let's fill. Let's call it Rubbox underscore inventory and make it variable. The first border should also be variable. So let's do that. And yeah, it's okay. We'll leave it as border frame. Let's compile and save it. And just before we go to the event graph, click on your border. And we want this to appear on the alignment. We'll do minus 0.0 or minus, can I do it? Minus zero. Point two. There we are, minus 0 0.02. And then this will leave at zero, that's fine. So that's that. And uh, let's go to the event graph. 
And then in here, we want to create a new function to filter the items that are supposed to go into this specific slot. And we'll call this filter equipment. Okay, so then let's go ahead and grab ourselves our get hero. We'll do get component by class. And we'll get our inventory component. We then want to do get inventory slots and do a for, whoops, for each loop. And we'll plug this into here. Okay, with this then, we'll do a break. And we're interested in the item ID. So we can hide the item quantity. And we'll do get row, get data table row. And this will be our data table there. Okay, now out of here, we'll do a break. And we want our images or our category, I mean. So hide everything but the category. And we want to check to equals equals enum if this category is equal to the one here. So let's promote this to a variable equipment category. And we need to set it somehow. So we'll make it instance editable and exposed on Spark. And let's then get a branch. This will go in here if the row is found. And if it is found, well, then we'll grab our um da, 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 da. we should make a new variable in here let's do this let's copy this actually promote the variable and do equipment list is what i'll call it like so okay we'll grab this equipment list and we'll do add unique untrue And this guy in here will come from this row here, like so. Let's clean it up a little bit. Once again, keeping everything organized. And with that said, I believe that's all we have to do for here. So let's compile and save. We then want to go ahead and create a new function called get non slot. And in here, we'll do get row, and we want to get data table row names and plug in our data table. And we'll do a for each loop. And we're specifically looking for the slot that's equal to nothing. So from here, we'll do get row, data table row name, plug it in. Once again, get your database there. And out row, we'll do a break, and we'll check is this. Um, so let's hide everything. We want the image. And we want the category. Okay. So in here then, first of all, let's do deal with the category. We'll do equals equals enum. If the category is equal to this category, and we'll do and boolean. And uh, boolean, then we want to check if this item image is equal to none. So uh, duh, 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 what was it called? This guy. If it's equal to none. So if both of these happen to be true, we'll then get a branch. Row found. We'll do grab our equipment list. And we'll add this additional slot to our equipment list. So add unique. True. And we want to get this guy and do a get this guy rather make item slot and plug in our item id in there like this and for the item quantity once again just you can leave as one and this will get our non-slot essentially since from the inventory slots they're not being put into our wardrobe inventory because they don't exist there so that's that let's compile and save it Next, we want to go ahead and create another function called get equipment slots. And in here, we'll be using the previous slots or previous functions we just made. So we'll grab our get none and we'll grab our get filter equipment. Okay. Then what we want to do is we'll grab our equipment list and we'll do a for each loop. 
So the get non slot and the filter equipment populates this for us. And we'll do a break. And we then want to create that wardrobe slot we made. So wardrobe slot. And this gives us a pin for the item ID, which will come from here. Now you can hide the item quantity since all of them will be one anyway. So that's that. Then at the very end of this, we'll do promote variable wb underscore wardrobe slot. And we then want to add it to that wrap box we have. So wrap box inventory add child to wrap box. Just like so. Okay. Now this will cause an issue because um, we're constantly adding them. We're never removing anything. So at the very beginning, we want to get that wrap box and we want to do clear children. So we're removing everything when it's created again. We then want to grab our uh, equipment list as well, and we'll do a clear in here too. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's connect that there then. And we'll be coming back to this later to um, add some more stuff. But for now, that's all good. So let's compile and save. Let's then head over to our event graph and we want event construct. So let's get rid of those in here. Then we'll um, get our mouse position on viewport like so. And that border we had called frame will do slot as canvas slot. And if you're curious again, this border is just the very outer border of our inventory here. So the very outer border. So slot as canvas slot and we'll do set position and we get that value there okay and at the very end we'll do get equipment slots like so with this done then we want to open up our content drawer and go to our wardrobe widget let's head over to the graph and we want to open up our get active slot and in here we want to create that widget so after the slot has been set what we'll do is um we'll drag this out a little bit further Give ourselves some room. Um, okay, so at the very end here, when the slot is activated, we want to create a widget. And this widget will be our wardrobe widget. So let's go ahead and do that. Wardrobe inventory. And for the category, we need to give it one. So out here, we'll do promote to variable. And let's call it our equipment category. Boom. Okay. Then next here, we want to promote this to a variable wb underscore wardrobe inventory. At the very end, we'll add to viewport like so. Then in here, we want to check is this valid? So let's grab our widget to a validated get. And if it is valid, well, then we'll remove it, remove from parent and there we are and let's connect that into there okay and i believe this is looking good now with this complete then we want to compile and save and in the event graph on event destruct we want to get a hold of that wardrobe inventory so we'll get it to a validated get and if it is valid we'll um, destroy it so remove from parent and this is just in case um, if we close the equipment inventory with our window still being open, it'll destroy it for us. So that's just that. Compile and save. Next, let's go ahead and test this. So if we go and play, we should be able to run around and open up our slots. So if we click on it, this is what we get now. These are showing up as heads. So more than likely I did something wrong. So let's go and fix that. Okay, so I found the issue. We're not actually getting the equipment category in here by creating a variable because this will have no value. So we'll delete that. What we want to do instead is we want to get a hold of this equipment category there. So if we get equipment category, we should have it right there. Plug this in. Now this does have a value. So if we compile and save and go to play, this now should work. So heads in here. Okay. And boom beards in here and so on now of course we can't just equip it right now we'll be doing that in the next part 
So with that said, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. And as always, happy developing.